Um, so we want to think about, as we listen to these different stories, we want to think about how we ourselves could apply what they're saying, what they're talking about, to our own work, to our own world, okay? We'll hear about a simple formula to ensure effective messaging, which some of you already heard yesterday, but we'll take it a little further today. And this is, um, it's the idea model, and it's how, do, how do we talk about being effective, okay, in some cases where the only thing that the boss cares about is the numbers, <laughs> right? But you care about more than that. Tim, Tim Selnow, is it Tim or Tim and Deanna? Tim, Tim's got it. He's a professor of strategic communication at the University of Central Florida. I'll talk specifically about storytelling just for a minute and the impact of those stories. And I'll use the philosophy of, of C.S. Lewis in that our inner world is understood by the stories we remember. And I'll tie that into the idea model because we've talked a lot about the effectiveness in taking information and, and information and turning it into action. If you like this presentation, I prepared it, delivered it, and worked hard on it. If you don't, uh, Deanna designed the slides. <laughs> A little bit about narrative. Uh, we are storytelling animals, as I talked about uh, C.S. Lewis's philosophy and why he used stories of fiction and fact to get his ideas across. We tell stories, it's how we understand. More importantly, we make our decisions based on the stories we remember. This is primary when we ask people to go back and discuss their decision making. They remember a dramatic story that helped justify their actions. And the reasons we apply are taken from the stories that we share. If we ask people to explain why they did something, they'll tell us a story. And that's a, important. One of the things that, that Matt Seeger, who will talk later, and I have talked about is that when we're talking about stories in crisis or emergency risk situations, those situations create space that need explanation. The explanation comes in the form of stories. So we like to think about it as the chaos of, of risk or the chaos of a crisis is resolved or truth is, is accepted or understanding is created through the stories that we tell. Talked a lot about the idea model, asking people to internalize the risk, then to give explanations of how the risk is manifested and then asking for actions. And of course, that has to be distributed in a way that they have access and comprehension. But Dan and I have talked about how this model translates into the storytelling process. And that's where we get into our different elements. Internalization is important. I was interviewing Dr. Steve Van Wee, that, whom Julie mentioned earlier, asking about his work with, with HPAI. And he couldn't finish the story without stopping and talking about what went on in the United Kingdom. And he told the story that, that Julie explained about the farmer who called him in his last seconds of life. Why? He'd built a bond with Steve and he wanted him to understand what it was like for him to go to his farm. Steve in turn to, uh, to make that, that farmer's life not to have ended in vain tells that story and he tells it eloquently and with passion and when you listen to him you understand what it means. And it made me stop and think as a researcher how when I study HPAI can I better understand the internalization process of a farmer who cares for that flock and I understand, uh, coming from an agriculture background, the, the connection, the emotional connection we have with our animals in that we want to care for them, we take pride in their health, to go into that, into that barn uh, and see it empty or to go into that barn and to see a stack of euthanized animal, animals. This is the kind of message that we need to have, not only in the minds of our, our farmers to understand what could happen, but those of us who study and communicate, we need to know the impact that that happens. So I tell that story now to everybody uh, that comes in and works on this grant with us. And then secondly, stories of distribution. I do not believe, and we can discuss this, but I do not believe that there is an aspect, a distributive element of the message that cannot include some sort of a story. I believe it is a, it's, it's a pervasive element of how we understand, and we need to keep that in mind. Explanation is where we tell stories that make the science real. The example I wanted to share is when we interviewed uh, an a, a extension person from the University of Minnesota 
who worked with, with uh, actually with Steve Dreitz had, had exchanged data trying to understand how the disease was coming from the feed mill. And we don't know all the answers, but we do know that trucks were crossing the line of separation, loading up at the feed mill with snow and slush on their vehicles. That was melting, getting onto the surface and created an active opportunity for the virus to get on other sets of tires and leave the feed mill. That's a story that she could tell to different farmers and say, look at this truck, and she could walk to the vehicle and show the different kind of slush and buildup on and underneath that vehicle, and it made it real for people. And it showed just how easily this virus could move around, even though they thought that, their, that, that the trucks were clean. That was a virus that could sustain itself in colder temperatures. And then there's the example of, of getting that sort of the action that we want people to, to move toward and this is where we start to see the stories that people tell of success, those successful applications of the different kinds of strategies that we employ. When we did some interviews with our, our highly pathogenic avian influenza project that we're working on right now for this grant, people told stories of how they were able to develop a line of separation. What they did, successful farmers who kept the disease out, we're calling them model farms not just modeling by what was, was instituted by the, the National Poultry Improvement Plan, but by their own actions and having those farmers tell their story to us so that we can transcribe that into a model. So in essence, what we'll write up and share with you all and publish in academic journals and include in our presentations will be stories that people tell us that we think are model behaviors manifest in that kind of an explanation. So for all of us, I think as I, I wrap up, when we look at this, this is the inner understanding, the ultimate understanding is those stories that uh, comes from those stories that we hear and that we retain. And we can listen to a lot of numbers. Asim talked about that yesterday about num numeracy and its failures to understand probability. But people do understand stories and it's a universal capacity for human nature. <laughs>